Hi Legends, happy holidays. Today we're going to be discussing one of the most underrated, classic, iconic, impressive films ever made for the holiday season. And that film is Barbie in the Nutcracker. I did get my nails done, so know, know that I will be doing this. I was going for Hailey Bieber, but I am more so giving Voldemort. Now, I do think the film will speak for itself on why it deserved an Oscar. However, there is some deep lore to this film for me personally. Oh, this film? Oh, this? Barbie and the Nutcracker is the first Barbie movie. Let that sink in. I'm gonna let that, yeah, first Barbie movie. I watched this movie so much that I think I burned it into my mom's memory. So much so that when I was watching this the other day, the music in the starting sequence of the movie triggered something in her brain and she knew exactly what I was watching. It was like two seconds in. She said, I know what you're watching. You haven't watched that in a while, which is true. I thought maybe this wasn't as good as I remember. Luckily, I was correct. And this is an amazing film. The movie came out in 2001 made by Mattel and Universal Studios, which means Mattel really put the budget behind this and you will know that because it was choreographed by the New York Ballet Master-in-Chief Peter Martins and the CGI was, um, you know how in Avatar they do like that CGI stuff? They do, they did that with dancers kind of, with uh, the New York City Ballet. So expect great dancing. Also, Tchaikovsky literally created the Nutcracker based on this movie. So I'm just feeding you all of the essential information so that you know how important this film is to society. So the movie starts off with Kelly and Barbie practicing some ballet in a studio. Now something about Kelly is she's annoying. So Kelly gives up easily and she just kind of pouts and says, I can't do it. I can't dance. I'm bad. I'm nervous. And Barbie, who is like, really good is like just watch this slays and kelly's like okay i can't do that so then barbie's like okay let's try something else so you know clara and the nutcracker yeah she was nervous once upon a time and then they kind of just jump into a completely different storyline so it's very princess bride-esque where we're having a story being told there's real life but then there's a story happening that is actually the movie so we skip we go to Clara, who looks exactly like Barbie. Is there a coincidence there? I don't know. So then we have this little transition to Clara, who's staring into like a snow globe or something. And she lives with her brother, Tommy, and her grandpa, Drosselmeyer. And she lives with her grandpa because her parents died. Drosselmeyer? Drosselmeyer? <laughs> I think these names are Russian. Is Tchaikovsky Russian? Drosselmeyer is the historically accurate name of the grandpa. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to call him that. Even though my brain is on overdrive trying to put those letters together and then vocalize, I'm going to try my best to do it. So Clara is helping with the tree with this woman who I assume is like a maid. Claire is putting up this little beautiful ornament of a ballerina and the lady is like, oh my God, that's so beautiful. And then Clara is like, yeah, my parents um, gave that to me. My parents are dead. The woman's like, okay. And then the maid's like, oh my God, somebody got into the gingerbread ornaments and we find out that was Tommy. Tommy is going to be a menace when he grows up. And I'm not gonna be surprised if that white sugar on his nose turns into something else when he's older. He's giving very rich frat boy energy. Now, is that a projection? It could be. I'm just making observations here. Who's to say? I'm not, I'm just saying. This is a this is a commentary video and I'm commentating on the fact that I think Tommy is going to be. Also something I noticed immediately is the grandpa slash Drosselmeyer man. He is the grandpa from Little Women. Okay, so I am going to compare grandfathers. Joe, we do not compare grandfathers. They look exactly alike. Also, something about Tommy, I don't know what it is about him, but he looks like every single Sims 2 boy character I ever made in my life. I couldn't stop thinking about The Sims 2 as soon as I saw Tommy. Anyway, Claire is like, Tommy, you're really dirty. And then Tommy gets mad and she's like, well, I'm going to tell grandpa that you're really dirty and he's going to make you take a bath. And then he scurries away. This type of sibling arguing is going to be a constant theme throughout the movie because siblings don't argue like that and it's not very realistic unless this is how wealthy children fight. 
then I would have no idea about that. But none of this really matters because Aunt Elizabeth arrives and she is the blueprint of the cool, hot, single aunt who's really rich and travels everywhere. She invented that entire trope and I knew as soon as I saw this, I said, oh, that's why I love this movie so much. Aunt Elizabeth truly is who I want to be in life. Then Aunt Elizabeth presents Tommy and Clara with some gifts. Tommy gets something... I don't really know what he got, but more importantly, Clara gets <gasps> a nutcracker. And Clara is kind of obsessed with this nutcracker. I can't lie, if I got a nutcracker, I'd be like, thanks, you've literally traveled the world and you're giving me a <gasps> nutcracker. Maybe I would like a nutcracker, actually. Let's shift into the movie and pretend we've received a nutcracker from Aunt Elizabeth. Actually, I do like it because it's from Aunt Elizabeth. Literally anything from her would be cool. First, Tommy is like, um, that nutcracker is ugly. But then he wants the nutcracker and Clara and Tommy start fighting over it. And then Tommy rips off the arm and Tommy feels really bad. And he's like, I'm sorry. And Clara is really nice about it. That is not what would happen if my brother broke my new toy, which did happen to me before. Actually, I received a, a bowling ball set and it wasn't real bowling. It was like a little game. It was the coolest thing ever. These small plastic bowling balls. And it was like actual tarp and crap and it had the bowling pins and it was like a game. It was so cool. And my brother broke it the day I got it. I still remember that. I remember how I was fuming. I think I threw a few punches. I probably kicked and I probably did something diabolical because I wasn't just one to do physical violence or verbal violence. I was also going to do something diabolical. Now, Clara was just really nice about it. And I don't know if it's because she's older. Maybe she was like 18 or something. I don't know how old Clara is supposed to be. So after opening presents and all of the excitement, Clara falls asleep on the couch. And this is when things start getting a little bit weird. And by weird, I mean the clock strikes 12. And when the clock strikes 12 in any movie that's animated, it's about to hit the fan. And that is a bunch of fairy dust coming around and sprinkling on a bunch of things. And then these little rat soldiers come out of a hole in the wall and the magic stuff just wakes up the nutcracker and after a bunch of commotion, Clara finally wakes up. And then there's just a battle and the Rat King arrives and Barbie's like, oh, I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming because this is crazy. And it's kind of a weird thing happening because I'm like, was this lore already established? Why are you guys fighting? The Nutcracker is literally fighting like 15 rats. And then the Rat King is about to... I think it's the Mouse King, actually. The Mouse King is about to... I don't know what that sound was. That's the sound of death. He's about to, the nutcracker, but then Clara comes in and she's like, mm, what are you guys doing here? And the Rat King's like, girl, you're about to be shrunk Alice in Wonderland style. And that is not the first Alice in Wonderland theme that happens in this film, but she does get shrunken. And then she's like, Ooh, I'm tiny. Does this voice sound familiar to you in any other classic holiday film? You're telling me that the Nutcracker, a wooden utensil, managed to escape a well-armed fighting squadron. Correct. Yes, he's one of the hotel employees in Home Alone 2, but he's also in Rocky Picture Horror Show and Clue 2. Amazing films. And he's also in Over the Garden Wall? Higley Town Heroes? He's in the wild thornberries. He's in Rugrats in Paris. Before I fangirl over this man, you have to be sure. You can never be too careful. Okay, according to my very limited research, Tim Curry is still a treasure. If I'm wrong, please check me. Then Claire is trying to escape while the Nutcracker is fighting them all off. And the Nutcracker is about to uh, probably again but then clara takes her slipper and whips it at the rat king i mean the mouse king and knocks him out then the mouse army retreats so then it's just the nutcracker and clara and they already have tension so the clara asks the nutcracker she's like hey can you turn me back because this is kind of weird mm, not supposed to be this small he's like sorry i can't do that the sugar plum princess can only do that and i don't know where she is i actually need to find her myself to turn me back into a human because i'm not supposed to be a nutcracker and she's like oh crap 
Luckily, this owl comes in that was decor earlier. And it's like, oh, this is where you can find the sugar plum princess. Claire is like, okay, after I find the princess, how am I supposed to get back here? Luckily, the owl is like, oh, don't worry. Here's this locket. You open it, you'll come back here a full-size human. And so that kind of worked out perfectly. Really great continuity by the writers of the story, I have to say. That's an Oscar point for me. The Nutcracker's like, okay, you coming? And she's like, uh, sure. So they go on a grand adventure. Now, if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to watch a movie with an adventure. This is why Lord of the Rings hit for me. I hadn't watched it ever, but I watched it recently. I was like, wow, have you guys seen this movie? It's really good. Lord of the Rings is a really good movie. I love the adventure aspect of it. I'm the type of person not to watch a movie that's popular until no one's talking about it and then say, have you guys ever heard of the movie Lord of the Rings? So then the Nutcracker and Clara fall down this very very Alice in Wonderland type rabbit hole, except it's not a rabbit hole, it's a rat hole. And they fall into this little pile of snow and they're like, whoa, we're in snow. And then they run into the snow fairy who looks exactly like Kelly. Now, something about snow fairy Kelly is she's gonna bump into the Nutcracker and hurt her wing and then get mad at the Nutcracker. What I love about the Nutcracker is he said, that's on you. You ran into me. And then Clara fixes her wing and then he's like, oh, you didn't even say thank you. I immediately had plus 10 respect for the Nutcracker. We love him. We do like him in this film. We love him or do we like him? And because this film was based on a ballet, we have a little dance number, our first real dance number. And it's by the fairies and they are incredible and I love it and the music is beautiful. <laughs> Something to note is Kelly the fairy is trying to get Clara to dance. And Clara's like, mm, I'm nervous. So I really got that. I thought I would be nervous too because this is a really weird environment to be dancing in. As Clara is walking out of the snow cave, these little flowers are growing in her footsteps. What does that mean? I don't know. Write down your guesses. Okay, good. Now, something about the land is that it's much less detailed than I remembered. I remember in my brain this place looking absolutely incredible, vibrant, amazing, something like I've never seen before. But now I look at it and I'm like, where is the detail? So we are going to have to take an Oscar point off for that. Anyway, there's this little bat that's really annoying named Pim. And he just is listening. He's always listening, which is kind of crazy. I thought bats had bad hearing, but they have bad eyesight. I'm pretty sure it is. Like they can hear vibrations. So it does make sense why he can overhear them. And then he relays this information to the mouse king. Now, isn't it a little weird that a mouse is in charge of a bat? I think so. But are we going for realistic with this movie? Probably not. <laughs> So Pim, the bat, is like, hey, there's a sugar plum princess that can destroy you. Thought you should know. The Mouse King's like, mm, not possible. I don't believe that's real. I don't even know. I've never heard of anything like that in my life. Then there's a lot more wordless exchanges between Nutcracker and Clara. And they run into this gorgeous horse. But then they're attacked by children who both look like Kelly. Kelly and Boy Kelly. So the kids explain the mouse army came and completely took over their town and destroyed everything. And the kids are actually very knowledgeable about the political landscape of where they live. And boy Kelly is like, Ooh. Prince Eric, he was supposed to protect us and he sucks and he's lame. I don't like him. That's very iconic that this three to five year old can clock exactly who their leader was and also give valid critiques about why he wasn't a good leader. So they're having a good time on their way to the Sugar Plum Princess with the beautiful horse named Marzipan. But unfortunately, the rats show up or mice, whatever, and they are ready to attack the group. One thing I, I have to think in my brain is, is the entire circumference of this land like a quarter mile? I imagine it is quite small because it is in a rat hole. So I'm just thinking about the logistics. I just want to know how it happens. I like to imagine what happens in the in-between. As they're trying to escape the mouse army, they to freedom! They run into more people who are threatening them. And these are two more significant characters that are very important to the story who I do deeply love. So we have Captain Kande. That's how Major Mint says it, Captain Kande. I like how he says it. And then we also have Major Mint who is kind of an idiot. I'm team Captain Candy, but also I did read a Google review that they are lovers. So that's really interesting too. And I never even thought about that. So after Major Mint and Captain Candy and the rest of the people are like, you guys are threats. They're like, no, we're not. We're actually trying to get rid of the 
the mice too. They're like, okay, let's join forces. So Major Mint also has critiques about Prince Eric and is like, he sucks and he's lame. And Captain Candy's like, hey, he's my friend. And Major Mint's like, mm, I don't care. Anyway, Major Mint's voice actor put his entire voice into this role. I wish I could do a fan cam of Major Mint's voice lines. Oh, but I have. That's a compliment, Captain Candy. Right here, uh, no problem at all. <laughs> the drink, Google it, the sewer. Something about Major Mint is he has a huge alpha complex. And we all know what happens with guys with an alpha complex. But he does want to be the leader of the group after they join forces and everyone's like, okay, whatever. In the meantime, Mouse King makes this giant rock thingy with his little wand. So that's going to be a threat later. And then we cut back to the Nutcracker and he's alone, just like looking at the moon and stuff being very dramatic and he's not sleeping. And Claire's like, why don't you sleep? He's like, I'm literally a Nutcracker. What's the point of me sleeping? I am made of wood and she's like you're so much more than a nutcracker she has a crush on him and that's fair i don't know why everyone was saying he was ugly i don't think he is <laughs> clara clocks him as prince eric she's like yeah i know you're prince eric so i don't know why you're pretending you're just a nutcracker because i know you're prince eric and he's like well no one respects me and she's like people might later and then they start their expedition the next morning and immediately their lives are put at risk because of Major Mint. Perhaps you should remember who's in charge of this expedition. Um, yeah, this guy definitely likes risking lives. Anyway, he literally pushes Captain Candy. Luckily, it, he's not dead. And Captain Candy and Major Mint get into a lover's quarrel and Major Mint calls him a dumbling clod hopper, I think. Yeah, they are fighting. I would fight too. He literally almost killed Captain Candy. Then they arrive to a new location, new location unlocked, and Nutcracker Nut and Clara are tasked with getting some resources. So they go and find some resources, and they run into brown-haired Kelly. Now, is brown-haired Kelly better than regular Kelly? I'm just gonna let the movie do the talking, okay? This scene deserves an Oscar. This is like 10 Oscar points. The dancing is stunning. Tchaikovsky, <sighs> I think this movie is what has caused my extreme love for classical music because I, I love classical music <laughs> so something we notice in this dance number is that clara is getting a little bit more comfortable dancing you know she's getting a little bit of pep in her step and then the nutcracker and clara have a little moment and you want to know who ruins it Luckily, during this battle, the ice fairies come and freeze the lake. The big rock thing is chasing them on the ice when all of a sudden, the Nutcracker's like, hold on, and then steps off the boat. I'm going to just break this ice. And I don't know how he knew that the ice wasn't going to break on his side. And this starts the beginning of my theory that Prince Eric was also a physics major because he does some crazy stuff in this movie. This is the first thing I've seen that I'm like, whoa, how did you know that that was going to happen? He ends up drowning the big rock thing. And then the bat, of course, knows everything that happens and then relays this information to the Mouse King. Ugh. How does this freaking bat know everything? And also, why is he so ugh with the Mouse King? Like, can you relax? You're a bat. After this major event that the Nutcracker saves everyone, Captain Candy's like, um, I think that the Nutcracker should lead us. And Major Mint's like, are you serious? He's literally a Nutcracker and made of wood. And Captain Candy's like, yeah, but he saved our life. And then the Nutcracker's like, um, I couldn't have done it without my literal queen. So that's partnership and they should rule the entire world. Anyway, it looks like they made it to a castle when it's a trap. Yeah, it's a trap. They get locked in a cage. I don't know how these bats pulled this off, but they did. I guess that the Mouse King has magic powers. So now Miss Clara is questioning her whole life. She's like, I shouldn't have come here. This sucks. I'm alone. What do I do? Luckily, brown-haired Kelly comes and is like, let me help you get on the swing. We'll take you literally right to the castle. Now, could they have done this way earlier? Maybe. I don't know. Who's to say? <laughs> so Barbie's sneaking through the castle trying to save her friends. Meanwhile, the fairies, they're starting a revolution. Yeah, you heard me. They're starting a full revolution against the Mouse King. So it's about to go down. Barbie then tricks her way to get into the cellar where she thinks that her friends are and she walks in and it's empty and she's like, mm, what? It's empty. And can I say this was a genius job by the Mouse King to have not only a cellar blocked by two idiot rats, he knows they're idiots and he he kind of probably knew they were going to get tricked. So he made the inside part of the cellar invisible and you can't hear anything. Luckily, Clara is 
of a genius. She's like, I'm going to smash air and see what happens. And it worked. So she releases everyone. Nutcracker does this crazy maneuver. As I said, I think that he was a physics major at least. And finally, we get the final battle, baby. We've been waiting for this. We've been waiting for some sweet action. I'm just kidding. This movie has been action packed. <laughs> Three for a loop there, <laughs> didn't I? So something we learn is that one, the Rat King is a fascist. I don't think that that was actually something that people were wondering. I think we all kind of knew that he was a fascist. Anyway, he turns people into stone so the rats start kicking the nutcracker's ass and clara spills some tea and pisses off the rat king no you're nothing but a coward hiding behind a magic wand and then the peak of the nutcracker's physics degree comes into play when he does this no! <laughs> he completely reverses the spell onto the rat king with great aim, might I add. The Mouse King, Rat King, whatever. He shrinks and then jumps into some water. And that is actually the beginning of Ratatouille. Anyway, the Nutcracker is about to croak. And Clara's like, oh my god. And then she kisses him and it solves everything. So this is feminism. I don't know what made me say that. But this feels very much girl. It feels very girl. The fact that she had to kiss him to relieve him of his spell. Not only is he alive, but he is back to being Prince Eric. And Barbie's like, whoa. And then Clara transforms into, you guessed it, Sugar Plum Princess. And they really just did such an amazing job. With the costume design here, the hair is gorgeous. The dress is gorgeous. Everything is gorgeous. And then Captain Candy and Major Mint kind of eat everyone up. <laughs> It's kind of crazy how they did that. So now we have the most incredible moment ever that I literally got goosebumps still watching. I think it's just because of combination that the dancing was so beautiful and the music was so beautiful and everything was so beautiful. So that's why I got goosebumps, I think. And then Prince Eric is like, marry me? And she's like, yeah. But then the rat bastard comes back on the bat who I'm like, why do you serve him like that? He's literally, he can do nothing for you still yet. The bat is still helping him out. It makes no sense to me. Steals the locket from Clara, opens it up. Ah, uh, which means that Clara then disintegrates and then is back on the couch sleeping. It sucks. She wakes up. It's like nothing happened. She tries to explain everything to her grandpa. Drosselmeyer, of course, is like, mm, do you need help? Although a, a better response from Drosselmeyer would have been, oh, it was probably just a dream. He's just like, oh, should we send you somewhere? I don't like him. Luckily, Aunt Elizabeth walks in and she's like, hey, y'all, what's up? I was on a walk. I actually ran into someone. Yeah, Prince Eric. Prince Eric walks in and it's love immediately. He gives her the locket. It ends. We're back in the studio. This was a really long story for Barbie to tell Kelly, but Kelly feels really inspired. And then they do the dance. And I will have to admit, I will give credit where credit is due. Kelly, Kelly did a good job. Okay, she did a good job dancing. And the movie ends. I'm very much in my hand heart era, if you couldn't tell. Was it not as perfect and amazing and wonderful as I described? If you want to see more of me, you can subscribe. And the crazy thing is, is I actually received an email today that said if people subscribe to my YouTube channel, they will be very wealthy, hot, and successful and cool. Let me make sure that's right. Yeah. If you are interested in becoming those things, I think a helpful thing could be to subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you.